Well, hello everybody and welcome. We we wanted to just sort of kick off our how to live in a motorhome mm. series, really, didn't we? We did, we did. We, well, we've been yeah. trying to think about all the different things. So we thought we'd start with um, how to live in a small space, really, because it is a small space, although it doesn't mm. seem like that to us, does it? Well, we were just chatting about it beforehand. Yeah. I think you become used to it and you like it. And I cannot imagine mm. if we lived in a house again, it would feel lonely and it would feel big and empty and cold. We we've, we've yeah. lived in some yeah. fairly big houses where you know from the from the yeah. front end of the lounge to the back end of the back bedroom you you couldn't hear somebody no, shout no. so <laughs> so we have lived in some big houses mm. and imagining living in that amount of space now feels horrendous yes it does doesn't it i mean but are these because, little things i think like I, if i'm lying in bed I, if I go to bed, I can see you still sitting in the on the sofa or like editing videos, edit, <laughs> editing the videos, or like yeah. I don't know. It just feels it feels secure and safe, and and you know where everything is really because you have to put things in a certain place. And if you can't find things, there's not many area places they can be. Well, I, well, I think I think one of the mm. as we looking back to the beginning of last year before well as we as we started to think mm -hmm. about having a caravan and going away for holidays and stuff like that and having that sort of going out and looking at caravans we wondered mm -hmm. whether well first of all I I sort of never towed a caravan before no you hadn't no well, well I'd done it once or twice mm -hmm. for work um, I towed a trailer and stuff um, but then, you know, when we bought the caravan, we then decided that, so that was March in 2016, when we bought the uh, Coachman Pastiche mm. caravan. And we thought, well, let, well, let's go on an extended sort of holiday, mm. didn't we, at first? So that's, that's sort of where we started and we still had the flat in in Hove but so once we we never wanted to go we liked it so much we never wanted to go back, back to I mean, to living in a in a house or a flat i suppose the hardest thing especially for late for women they will say oh but all the things i can't get rid of the things and i well, we we brought up well, four boys, and I mean, well, we'd carried around with us a lot of stuff, and I think that's the hardest thing is deciding about your possessions because if you really, really have only got a caravan or a motorhome, it's very, very hard. Um, well, but I have to say, we couldn't, we really struggled, and the, even now to this day, we still have about four boxes of things, don't we? That we don't well, have that, uh, with us. And uh, you know, and you say well it's hard for women to do that. Mm. But I I look back over you know, when when we when we, we went travelling at the end of March and then we came back in April, May and June to sort of clear out. And I remember some of the some of the little arguments we had about what we could give away or throw away and that was because I become emotionally attached to ridiculous things and I always feel like oh I can't throw that away because it 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 might be useful or it might be worth some money if I sell it but I'm never organized enough to actually sell anything no. on eBay so I I know that we got uh, and eventually what I said to Wendy was look I don't want to see what's in the bag you're throwing in the bin or taken to the charity Did I? Mm. and and you got rid of a load of stuff mm. that I probably would have said well, you can't get rid of that I 
But I, I, don't, I don't know what it is no. that you got rid of. You so don't miss it. We don't miss the things. We don't miss the no, things. No, we don't really, really don't miss the and things. But I do think one thing that I want to say is that um, I had lots of things that belonged to my grandparents and great grandparents, and I and I carried yeah. them around in our various houses for years. Yeah. And I always thought our children would want them. But what it came mm. down to is they don't want them, and that was the hardest thing. You carry old toys, old belongings, possessions around with you, and you store them because you, you like them and you think your family will want them, perhaps when you're dead or when you move out. But it really upset mm. me that they say they, they don't want it. They, they have their own things and they don't want old things. And it, that's really upset me, and I have missed some of the things, like some photos and some belongings particularly of my mum and I found that very very hard well, I think very we, very hard and I but we, I'm getting over it yeah. I'm getting over it yeah. I mean what's the point nobody wants them these kids today they've got their own ideas and they don't they don't well, really want them and the photos they have are all online and they like it like that they we don't live, want we them. live in a throwaway society yes, these yeah. days mm. and mm. you know I'm I'm pretty sure all of our children mm. who are very grown up now and yes, run their yeah. own lives and families yep. and make their own choices yeah, they, and they mm. all mm. live in this or you know that's worn out mm. because they've had it for six months and they throw it away or they give it to charity mm. and they think that's okay we mm. are not so much like no. that we are I am a little bit like that but mm. uh, we do try to conserve and reuse. It's mm. not we're not quite in the make do and mend mentality well, I'll tell you as something. our parents might. Have no, been. but I can remember when we were first married, mm. we were very pleased to be given a mattress, even though it had a spring poking through it. Yeah. Or right, worn yeah. out sofas. I mean, and things that was, like that. We that was definitely thrilled. make do. Because you never we were, couldn't get credit, could you? And you'd never have the money to buy a new mattress. So. We, or things like that. So. Well, yeah, I don't. I. Yeah. I don't think until quite, quite a few years into our married life, that I personally had ever had a new no, it was a long mattress time. on my, on my bed. Even as a child, no, no. growing up, it was always you know I was the youngest of nine mm. children from my dad's two marriages, mm. and everything was sort of hand me down. I can Apart tell you when well, the first time we got a brand new mattress was when Daniel moved out to get married to Lorraine. No. Yes, it was, because we'd always had my mum and dad's well, old that, mattresses or oh, family yeah, members. Yeah, 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 and Daniel yeah. moved out to marry now, Lorraine, and then we were able to... Because we used well, to sleep in the box room. Well, I think he moved out. When did they get married, was it? 2005. No, that was Alex. No, yeah, 2000. No, the first of the second, 2003. That's yeah. when they got married. Yeah. yeah. And that was the first time. And we bought a new mattress and a king-size bed. 2003. Lovely. So yeah. that was 30 years mm. of marriage without a new mattress on our bed. Yeah. Now, Nor a so, new bed frame. We hadn't even had a new bed frame. We'd had old beds. Well, that's true. Anyway, they were rambling yeah. on enough about yeah. beds. So that's anyway, beside the point. So... But, We've, you know, we've actually moved away but, from but the get, thing getting back to we were saying about the hardest getting thing. back to yeah. mm. sort of living in a small space this this is the sort of first mm. and it's a bit unplanned and rambly mm. but what we plan to do mm. is to map out yeah. our journey through going from mm. what what might be called a fairly standard average life mm. living in a yes, house or it a flat very very normal um you know going to work doing shopping on saturday mm. you know maybe going out for a drink now and again and, or a, or a meal at a restaurant now and again and just living an ordinary life to what we live now which many people have said to us oh living the dream yeah and I, you know, and to be honest, I think we're really lucky to be able to do this. Oh, oh and I think too many, some people that live full, I want to know, and if there's anybody that lives full time in a motorhome or a 
caravan in the in England that doesn't have an own property, perhaps that they rent out or anything. But and I think that's the big thing for that's the big thing for us. Most people have got a property they could We're, go back to, or or somewhere <laughs> they could go back to. If you, I'd like to know if there's anybody that's given everything and there's no going hmm. back. If you do this, yeah, and there's if no. If you're going. living in a motorhome or a caravan or hmm. in a small space like this, yeah, that's mobile. And you don't have, like we don't, you don't have a safety net of you can't go back. a bricks and sticks property. No. Yeah, we don't have that. If if this if this went up in flames mm. today, we have to stay in a hotel and think about whether we can claim on the insurance and get the money back to buy another one because we don't have a home apart from this one to go no. back to. Many people that say full time actually have they have a house that they rent out that they could always go back to if they get fed up. This is a choice we've made, we've committed to it, and we're very, very happy with that yep. choice. I think in America they call it van lifers because they're the people van that can't go back, they've got yeah, nothing to go yeah. back to. So that's so, good. So it's really good and yeah. exciting, and we don't yeah. regret it. No, so no, 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 never no, regret it. No, no we're happy. Right. Yep. Um, um, you know, but it is a difficult step to uh, take, and people do say, "Oh, they just they envy us, and they wish they could do it." Lots, well, you can do it. Lots of people, yeah, want to do what we're doing, mm. but they feel unable. Yeah, they've got to wait. Uh, yeah, you know, they've got to wait until they retire, or they've got to wait for something else. Mm. Uh, they've all got to wait for something else, mm. and that. Now there's there's a saying that mm. um, I was reminded of last week that um, we quite like, mm. and it's it saying goes everything you ever wanted mm. is on the other side of fear. Mm. If you overcome your fear, yeah. you can do whatever yes, you, you can. want. Yes, and we've done that. We've yeah. overcome the fear mm. of selling up. And moving into a motorhome, putting whatever money we've got left into a bank account, giving us almost no interest, and then living while working, and you might say living the dream. Mm. It's a bit of a dream. It is. Mm. Um, we love it. Yes, we do. So can. stay tuned mm. for this detailed look of how you go mm. from a standard life in the UK mm. to living in a motorhome full time mm. Mm. without a safety net. Yep. Yeah. And just quickly, if you wondered why Pippin isn't in the screen, she's a bit off colour. She's got some problem with her skin, I think. So we're taking her to the vets tomorrow. She's a bit mm. quiet. So we'll keep you posted. She's been a bit we're quiet not, for a couple of days. We're not too worried about her, but we'll be glad to get her to the vets. All right, then. That's all for now. We'll see you soon. There she she, is. She's there anyway. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> see you soon. Bye.